every year for the last 10 years I sent a letter to the poor asking him could I come and see him I mean just go to him and sit opposite to him and see him like that no newspapers no razzmatazz no hell glory be uh, no fine show just me and him and let's call a spade a spade so out of the blue last August, August the 22nd, I got a letter, could have come down and seen him because he changed his schedule. So as soon as I could fix it up, I jumped on Ryanair and landed in Rome as quick as that. And then I walked through the, the palaces to get to his room and there were all the Swiss guards in the yellow and black. And through the basilica, St. Peter's Basilica, with the high ceiling and Michelangelo's paintings on the top, and the Pieta. Now I says, no, I'm not going to be influenced by that. I'm just going to talk to him. No bells, no whistles, uh, no hidden microphones, just me and him. Benedict and Tony. Well, I got there, and... He sort of knew I was coming because I went, I went in the room and he stood up to greet me. He was all in a black suit as though he knew I wanted a plain conversation. Anyway, we sat down together and he had me simple questions ready. And I says to Benedict, I says, does it still count what we learnt in the catechism when we were little? Like God is the supreme being in all perfections. And there were four last things. There was death, judgment, hell or heaven. Did that still count, I asked him. And this, when you say something it's infallible and you can't be wrong. And all the other things, is it definite like that? And he looked to me and he smiled. He said, well in olden times, Tony, people wanted a simple and direct answer. They wanted the truth just like that wrapped up carefully and then they were happy it was like we were feeding them answers on the plate and they ate them and they were happy and they were full but they never had to do any cooking or thinking and that's the way it was and millions were like that and, and it, they were so busy working and and being in trouble that they didn't have time for anything else so they were happy but times have changed now and you can't really wrap truth up in a box and say it's always going to be like that because we had the catechism and canon law and we had everything mapped out and the creed we had it all mapped out everything exact well we found out a lot we found out that truth is changing its dynamic and what we found out is how compassionate people are how, how good they are in their hearts and this was a big discovery because we got into a lot of trouble because I can't say any words on this sexual abuse now because people were so hurt by the little children being, being abused and, and all that that there was no words to say and how sad and sorry they felt we learnt a lot from them because we were all stuck with the rules and things like that so we're going to change it. We're not changing it yet. So you can't just take people out of a simple way of looking on things to a, a very different way. It takes time. But we've got committees going and they, they're, they're working behind the scenes. And Tony, do you know why I'm here? Well, my name, as you know, is Cardinal Ratzinger. And I was one of the most conservative cardinals that they had. And they wanted just to hold back a little bit more. It was like the boy who kept his finger in the dike. Do you remember in Holland the sea was higher than the land and they had dikes all around. And the little boy found a leak in the dike which could have got bigger and bigger in the night time. And then everybody, if he had just stopped it, would have been drowned. So he kept his finger in the dike and he saved all the people. Well, that's what I'm doing now. I'm keeping my finger in the dike because the changes are coming thick and fast. And we can't stop them. But going back to this compassion and love that people have, this is a new thing for us. It's never been let go. But with all the press 
and the internet. Everybody knows what's happening all over the place. And if somebody gets hurt, if somebody gets murdered, if, if there's a tsunami, we know about a people's heart and the amount of organisations that are giving money and, and, and what's springing out of the heart is absolutely amazing. So one of our committees is, you see all this splendour, the Basilica and so on, we're going to sell all that. We'll get about 700 million euros for it, but we'll keep a 50% stake in it because it's going to become a museum and we're going to use all that money for all the poor people in the world. And then the priests and the cardinals and the bishops, they're all going to live in simple houses and uh, the rest of the money will go for it making people have enough to eat and will we change anything else well Christmas is simple Christmas is is down to earth people are happy we'll never change Christmas there are a lot of myths and stories we brought together to make Christmas but Christmas has been our best success because people at Christmas not only are they nice to the people that we but this goodness spreads out all over the world and through the television there's a big happiness coming along. It's like as though we had a finger in two pies. The materialistic pie with the puddings and then the drink and then the spiritual pie with baby Jesus. Well baby Jesus links us to that, that in heaven, links us to the divine. Now I said, Benedict, can you give me one quotation that I could go away with? And he said, yes, just this, Tony, because we don't know everything. And it's this. It's from Shakespeare, from Hamlet. And he said, do you know, there's more truth above the heavens and on the earth than are dreamt with in your philosophy, Horatio. In other words, we don't know it all at all. And Tony, for many things we talk about. But he directed me attention to the big fountain in the square. And all the water was gushing up. He said, you see that fountain? Well, that fountain is like this divine source. It's God or Jesus, whoever you want to call him. And it's always, always pushing up and spreading all over the place. Now, when the water falls down, people have different coloured cups. The Hindus have one cup and they drink out of that. And then the, Mo the Muslims have another cup and they drink out of that. And the Christians have another cup. And all the religions are drinking from different cups. But the water, the divine inspiration is always the same. So I thank the Pope for his directness. And I wished him well. And there's one favour I asked him. I says, Benedict. I'm not going to publicise what you said here tonight, this afternoon, but can I just put this little video on YouTube just to show people in a small way what you've said and how things are changing? And he smiled at me and he said, Yes, you can indeed, Tony. And I said, Thank you very, very much, Benedict.